Alright, the I'm certainly pretty audible in all those videos, although the sound does get to be equal uh, my microphone volume at times, I think. At least I could challenge it at some of the loudest moments. It's a... Uh, one of the disadvantages I have with uh, OBS is that the dip, you know, there's such a major distinction between uh, what I set my volume level to and what you guys, your own separate volume level. I'm actually going to keep it down this 50% uh, for anyone who is inconvenienced by the uh, the volume level and uh, still managed to keep with us all this way. Sorry. Oh man. No water. I didn't get up. Take much of a break. I'm going to power through this and after tavern defense I'm going to just put away dungeon defenders and try to get through the rest of these questions. 195 comes from Lone Wolf 9681 who writes, Grimith, have you ever thought of playing a playthrough of Dead Island or Dead Island Riptide with Lethal Feline Jeff or Revocane? Two, and will we see more 60 minute flash or more high quality gameplay with you and SKS? I don't have any interest in uh, losing a blockade. There goes those center blockades. All those fucking kobolds just powering right through. Um... I don't have any interest in it, but I will probably record myself playing another Flash game before I die of cardiac arrest. But SKS? He's a condescending ass. Who wants to hang with him? 196 is brought to us by Zero Umbrella Corp, who writes, If we asked you to dance for us on a live stream, would the answer to that question be the same as the answer to this question? Two, what is the average price of bacon where you live? Nope, the answer would be get fucked. Next! 197 is brought to us by T. Fiernan, who writes Overlord Grimoth. You know, of course, the name is misspelled with two M's. Who is your favorite comedian? Two, what is your opinion on collecting retro games? Uh, favorite comedian is Louis Black, hands down. As for the collecting of retro games, I have two friends who do that. And some of the games I've borrowed in the past so that I could have the game while doing this hobby have come from one of them. This one particular guy, uh, by the way, is the same asshole involved with Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, and Aversion, and Witch, which he suggested in exchange for allowing me to borrow uh, Defender of the Crown uh, and an Amiga. I think he could pick the worst game. 198 is from Diabetic Necromancer, who writes, What is your favorite video game dilemma that can be solved with common sense? What do you do slash play when you want to be happy? Uh, the strategic dilemma? Oh, that has practically no health. Um, the strategic dilemma? Um, I guess. My favorite genre is strategy games, and they can be like puzzles, little brain teasers you have to solve. The less random variants, uh, the better. Uh, although if I wanted absolutely no random variants at all, then I wouldn't play a puzzle game, so I clearly want some chance of the best answer still not being the right answer, because I'm stupid. Uh, as for what I do or play when I want to be happy, I'm still looking for that one, Chief. Uh, Dungeon Defenders, though, is a, is a pretty solid pick. Here come Sharkin! Basically right into the face of death, since there's no blockade to even stop that. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with them walking into the face of death. Big fan. Now that I'm actually, or, you know... Upgrading my main attack towers here to the final level and fucking, uh... You know, I was trying to pick up mana from them and not a single one of them was fucking dropping mana. A wave 34, right? On the list of things I should have upgraded sooner. <laughs> so yeah, Dungeon do Defenders. That's a game I, uh, I play when I want to be happy, right? 199 is uh, from Tinker Toy Zero Fu77. How can you make everything you say sound so condescending? You know, there's potential here. Like I can see the internet alley oop you're making, and all I need to do is make a wicked sick burn to complete the circle with a killer joke. But I just can't close the deal. Sorry, everyone. I think I fried too much bacon. Number 200. I think I forgot to add a note in between uh, um, the the videos. 
the videos and the Rudy's. That was like the end of video eight? I, I, I maybe it was seven. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh god, that was nine? What? Really? Oh god, really? Did I, did I just not delete like an earlier failed file or something? Oh god. Was it? Was it? Uh, I keep scrolling very fast, hoping that I see like a little notification that I made for myself. Oh god. Uh, I'm just gonna give up on scrolling. That, that, that definitely hasn't helped me at all. I'm too fucking tired to see that shit, I guess. Um... One, two, three, four... Uh, yeah, 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 fuck. I guess that's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that was the end of video eight, rather. I just don't remember where the fuck that comment was left. Video, video eight. Sorry, everyone. Got derailed. Uh, yeah. Number 200 from Sneaky Bovine, who writes, Dearest Grimmeth, your demon ship, uh, DM man ship, excuse me. Yeah, this position will work. Is, uh, riveting. Have you ever considered voice acting or writing? Also, how do you make a living? Well, Sneaky Bovine, good news, your queries were already answered, and I didn't give smart-ass flies. You've got guaranteed second bacon. Uh, I've considered it before. I don't think it's for me. How do I make a living? Museum. Museum-y things. Uh, question number 201 from, is from, oh, rather, entrant number 201 is from Jabberdow, who asks, If there is any advice from your successes or failures in life you would want to give on, what would it be? Number two, which book, um, slash movie, slash question mark, has had the biggest impact slash influence on your life? That's another one of those things where people try to sneak multiple questions into one question, right? Mm-hmm. Fucking make some sort of quirky ass, mutated, uh, compound question. Uh, uh, if there's any advice, though, uh, don't create Q&A videos for your viewers. And if you're gonna create Q&A videos, don't give everyone two questions. Because, uh... Then they're like, two questions? Well, normally I'd try to fit two into one, but now I'm gonna, like, try to fit four and five into two. It'll look better. You will spend an inordinate amount of time plotting outlines of these questions, so your actual video in which you give these answers doesn't last for fucking a day. As for your second query, we won't go with game, because we know what that answer would be. And we won't go with movie, because I don't like those so much, and I already mentioned them. So we have to go with book. Oh, wait, shit, I already mentioned that, too. Uh. Uh. Well, in that case, we'll just go with the old standby of game and say SimCity port for the Super Nintendo. All right. Okay. Uh, entrance number 202 is from Boxer Demon, who writes, What's your favorite Western film? And then, uh, question two is, Do you like the, uh, Pogwiz? Pogs? Pogs? Oops. I like them. Westerns, uh, I never had much tolerance for those. The only one I can think of that I remotely even enjoyed was the old Alamo movie with John Wayne. I consider that a Western because A, John Wayne, B, Texas was a Western frontier back then, and C, John Wayne. I think those are all compelling and unique reasons. Uh, as for your second question, I don't even know what that is, so I don't think I can like it. Uh, number 23, 203 is, uh... From Rafe the Mad, who wrote uh, sort of like a like a half reply to someone else. Uh, he did have a beard, and my first thought upon seeing this video was, "Dude, what happened to your beard?" One. So my uh, my first question is, did you shave it because you wanted to be rid of it, or because of outside pressure? So much for thinking about it for a week. Um. Two. Have you ever thought on the lines of, "What's the point of our existence?" If yes, then what conclusions have you come to? Unless you're religious, doubtful, since you come off quite a bright guy, in which case I don't want to know. Uh, since the first question has uh, already been answered, I think I forgot to... Yes, I did. I forgot to make little beautiful blockade, babies. Silly grimmer. Oh, well. 
That's why there's a wall of Archer minions there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Man, it's not like they do that much fucking damage anyway, or, you know, they just serve there as a, a, a secondary wall. They compensate for the first one, but since I didn't make the first one uh, on this particular wave, the final wave of everything, I was distracted. There you go. Uh, since the first question has been answered, we'll get to your second question. And I find your insinuation that religion does not equal intelligence to illustrate either foolish ignorance or willful stupidity. Uh, perhaps you parrot the historical intolerance of Western civilization by being equally thick-headed. Uh, I find the extremist, atheist attitude to be uh, just as morbidly amusing and deeply dangerous as religious zealotry. Personally, I don't know why I'm here, although I've searched through the answer uh, for the answer, uh, both uh, in religious texts and quiet contemplation. At this point in my life, I've uh, stopped asking existential questions because I've become apathetic. Until my opinion undoubtedly changes, I see the subject as a waste of my time. That's right, an old waste of time card. Serves me well. Like now. Uh, 204 uh, entry comes from Kuba Makar. Kuba Maker? Kuba Makar? Who writes, one, do you prefer to make content alone or with someone like Lethal? Alone, but social activity does have its perks. Uh, 205 comes from Brandon Renard, who writes, why are you so badass? And two, cake or death? Viewer interpretation can answer the first question, uh, cake can answer the second one. The 206 entry comes from Tohan, who writes, I only have one question. Why you shave, Brim? You look so, so young now. Light you better with Big Grim Beard. It's a good thing I don't accept life and fashion advice from my viewers. Um, I guess uh, Luther the Blockades has, uh, you know, given uh, all the fireball towers a better angle instead of them trying to shoot here, I guess. It looks like we got it, barring catastrophe, which is certainly not impossible. Particularly since I can't uh, really control or influence things by building new towers and stuff. I certainly don't think that, uh... The gas trap for a waste of my time, though. I have to remember that in the future, right? Always looking for self-improvement. I don't exactly want to be taught or shown by other people how to do things better, but, uh... I get a, I get a big thrill and sense out of doing these things myself. Is that why I play this game so often alone? Sort of like piece together the various puzzle things. Because there's so many options with my characters. Uh, so yeah. Uh, entry 207 comes from Mam162 who writes, I noticed in your video, when you, were, when you removed the CWG2 videos, you mentioned you were missing the Baltimore-Pittsburgh game. Are you a Ravens or Steelers fan? Two. What is the worst game you've ever played in thanks for three years of great LPs, Ravens? There are two things I'm loving this year. One, the Ravens won the Super Bowl, so I don't even care how well they play this year. They get an entire carte blanche from me uh, for this year, and probably for next year, too, because I wouldn't exactly call myself an absolutely dedicated uh, fan who watches every single game they play, because that'd be like subscribing to someone on YouTube and watching every single video they make. No one's that interesting for me, especially not a professional football team, which leads to two, because the Steelers are doing a fantastic job of not doing a fantastic job this year. I mean, they picked up the pace, and then right on Thanksgiving night, BAM! Brought down the hammer! Not gonna lie, I would have been more upset by Steelers' season sweep than I would have of, say, the Ravens not making the playoffs this year. Why? Because we got that ring, all is forgiven. I don't care who leads the offense. Spring break. As for the worst game I have ever played, ooh, I think we're gonna have to dip into games I have physically destroyed. And that is a small list. I think the distinction goes to Dai Katana. I was with my best friend when he got the long-expected game at his birthday party. I was at his house when he and I both took turns attempting to play it. I was with him in his backyard when he decided to set the game on fire. It was that awful. And the mere concept of the game being added to GOG.com forever changed the notion that the acronym could ever stand for good old games ever again. Imagine a game uh, more riddled with bugs than Civilization V at release. 
than Daggerfall at release. That's Daikatana. Not Daikatana at release. Fully improved and patched Daikatana. You don't want to play Daikatana at release. Oops. Before I get on the 208, let's take a look at you, you little fucking kobold. Where the hell are you? There you are. Oh, look at him. Holy shit. Well, uh... I'd like to see more upgrade levels, and, uh... I, um... You know, it's unfortunate that uh, there's no tower health category. Because that's pretty swell, but I guess he's not that bad. Guess he's not that bad. I guess. You know, he's got a lot of caster rate there, too. I mean, that's not something I'd, I'd put on this guy, but, uh... You know... I'll probably put him on another one of my other guys. I'd probably put that on my monk. I don't know. Our health's a big deal. I'd have to think about that. But I'm not going to think about that right now. Nope. We're fucking done. Oh, that was fun and enjoyable. I probably wouldn't have gone through 35 waves of that without, uh, without doing something like this. Because that is a lot of fucking... Oh. I, I didn't even press G to see how much time I even spent on that. You know, queue up that thing, the build ding, to see how many people I killed. Oh, well. Shit happens. Yes, yes. Oh, autumn sale, 75% off oh, civilization 5. Oh, boy! Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, it's my birthday, don't you know? Well, it was. There you go. You can you can accompany me, and uh, everyone else can. You can all just stare at a black screen because we're we're going into uh, audiobook mode. Griffin needs to uh, needs to conserve energy here and plow through these things better. All right. Um. Let me uh, find my place. Two hundred and eight comes from King One Two. One, two, two, two. You have to save one major villain in history. Who would you pick and why? Difficult question. History has a difficult time identifying people who were villains, because that's a completely personal justification. An identification of people. For everyone that lists Adolf Hitler or Joseph Stalin or Pol Pot, you have uh, people who'd name Andrew Jackson or Margaret Thatcher or Robert Mugabe. So to answer your question, I first need to consolidate my internal list of major historical villains, then need to isolate those which would require saving, whatever the hell that means. How am I saving them? Is there, say, an assassination attempt and I'm preventing it from happening? Do I alter an event which precludes them from pursuing a path to abhorrence? Your question leaves too much to interpretation, so I'm going to pick an all oddball answer here. Aaron Burr was a major historical villain because his duel with Alexander Hamilton, in which he killed the man, drastically altered American economic and social politics. No Hamilton and the Federalists uh, lost their face. Who knows what happens otherwise? Maybe the party regains traction and legitimately challenges the Jeffersonian Republicans. And maybe Aaron Burr doesn't become such an ostracized failure in the process. He led a pretty pitiful life afterward. So, we stop him from getting into that duel. Maybe we pull a King of Dragon Pass and his wife stops him or something. I forget whether he was married, but you know, if he wasn't, then maybe that was the problem. <laughs> Perhaps I shall save him by helping him find true love. And then Alexander Hamilton may keep living. Question 209 comes from uh, Tie-Dye Dragon, who uh, writes... Uh, 202. Uh, he wrote, you know, has a copy to... Uh, yeah, bacon is serious business. I cook bacon bits for uh, a living 50 hours weekly. 50 plus hours. Oh my. Oh my. That's right. Two questions and if derping willing to stand up for derpage. Why you joke about bacon? How do you rate your life? Why not joke about bacon? As for my life, eh, 6 of 10 would play again. Uh, entry 210 comes from Arakash, who writes, After your experiences as a storyteller in VTM and your GM experience in other tabletop games, what is the best piece of advice uh, you would give ex inexperienced players and GMs? For both inexperienced players and GMs, uh, I believe we've mentioned this, or at least I have earlier, uh, identify what it is you expect or want from a tabletop role-playing game and share that with the members of your gaming group. 
That way you can find people who better match your interests or better cater towards each other if you stick with the same group. Tabletop gaming is a hobby for everyone. Isolating what you want from it is important. Uh, entry number 211 comes from Hi74. Here are my two questions. Have you had any prior experience with Dwarf Fortress? Uh, two, what are your thoughts on the most recent installments of the Elder Scrolls series, Oblivion Skyrim DS Online? The Dwarf Fortress angle has already been covered in short, yes. As for DS, I've not played Skyrim. I think it's okay, but I have no interest in playing the game. I spent several hours on Oblivion, maybe a dozen in total, and I just didn't get into the setting or the characters or really all of the game mechanics. And I don't know peep about TES Online, and I have no interest in learning. That particular game genre does not appeal to me. Entry 212 comes from Kitsune Zeta, hello there, who writes, 1. What do you think about the removal of the character limit on the comments? Uh, 2. What are your thoughts in general on the whole visual novel medium? That is, assuming you've ever heard of visual novels to begin with. I think the character limit removal is a net positive. I like typing elaborate comments, and this saves me some time. For anyone who argues about how anyone can now post entire movie scripts or song lyrics or governmental documents, I'd like to remind you of the same tools I had to block people that I possessed before the latest YouTube change. Uh, comments auto-remove from people I block, so I definitely spend less time on spring cleaning than a particular person does and getting an account and copy posting on my videos. As for visual novels, um, I've played some. Uh, you know, there are great stories to be found in them. Uh, but I see the visual novel genre in general as like a tweener, attempting to cater to two different markets. Uh, generally not enough crunch to be a worthwhile read, and not enough interactivity to be an actual game, and I'm not easily wooed by graphics. I would uh, rather read a great novel and play a great game than play a good visual novel that does both. Um, you know, and I'm sure there are games that are good and that are great that I've never found, that I've never even heard of, that I won't have the time to, to, to play in my entire life. And I'm, just, I'm, I'm sure there are, you know. You know, and of the ones that I found interesting or enjoyable, I, I don't play that many. Obviously, they have to be English translated for me. Uh, I can't even name any of them right now. <laughs> Good news, everyone. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. We have, um, you know, let's get a little bit of music here. A little bit of music in the background, sort of calm myself down, soothe myself. Not not music with words, though, Grimoth. Not music with words. Words are bad. Words are bad. Where did I put that track? Did I put that in my music folder? I mean, that would make sense. Bleh, what? <laughs> Where is it? I just listened to it earlier this week, right? That was a thing that happened, right? Right? Ha! Huh. I don't know where the fuck that went. I'm ordering you by date. Yeah, you're ordered by date. It should be there. Search. Uh, cr okay. Where the hell is that? I oh oh. Oh, oh, it has a special thumbnail, so of course. I, I was looking for the VLC player. <laughs> we'll play that. Pretty low in the background. I'm not exactly sure how uh, loud it'll be for you guys. I don't think it'll be that loud, though. I have it, like, at 10% volume, and I'm listening to it at 10%. 5%, actually. So, it'll just be something there to tease your ears. There we go. Right at the edge of your vision. Or your... Not your vision, your senses. That you can barely hear it at all. This is Chrono Trigger, Ruined World, Eternal Derelict. Song that was mentioned earlier. Um. Uh. So, yeah, it's Kitsune Zeta's Query. Uh, 213 comes from Optical Jesus, or Jesu5, who writes, How are you? 
How has YouTube influenced your lifestyle? I'm tired of frying bacon. YouTube has consumed considerable hours of free time these past years that I would have devoted to some other hobby or pursuit, but I'm okay with it. Till the moment where I feel that it is wasting my time. If that occurs, then I will drop it. Like it's hot. 214 comes from Nick Hawkins, who writes, Who is the main role model in your life? Two, will you change sites if a better alternative comes up? I think I made a reference that Mr. Rogers was the only person in my childhood who didn't lie to me. That aside, I really looked up to my parents as a kid, particularly my unapproachable and highly intelligent father. My attitudes to him definitely shifted as I entered my teenage years, but I remained intimidated of him until I left college. And about your second question, hmm. Less extreme than, uh, than Bammy's notation about every video site being shut down ever. Who says a better, better alternative doesn't already exist? We'll see. Uh, entry 215 comes from Halatov. Halatov. Ha. Latov? I don't know. Uh, I, one, I have a feeling that you are a kind of person who could one day just delete all of your uploaded videos. I don't want to insult you or something, just wondering if it's true. Two, your favorite book and why. It could happen. I have a deep sense of attachment to keeping track of things from a historical sense, and I'm unsure whether anything can be truly deleted from the internet, particularly the group Google overlords involved, but I could feasibly close my account and nuke everything. And as for my favorite book, uh, 1984. I enjoy dystopian novels in general as a way of uh, identifying cultural and societal flaws. They serve as commentary of alternate history paths, which the intelligent are rightful to fear because they are, or at least were at the time, plausible. Uh, 1984 would be my favorite adult one. I also am pretty sure I mentioned Are You My Mother as my favorite children's one. So, I figured I'd give another one, to just show you how mercurial I am. Uh, going back to dystopian novels, Brave New World, The Handmaiden's Tale. It can't happen here. I remember when I first read 1984. It was 8th grade, not long separated after reading Animal Farm as a class assignment. 1984 was pleasure reading, a Christmas gift request. Knowing everything I knew about George Orwell and how Animal Farm ended, I still allowed myself to think that everything would somehow be okay at the end. He somehow yanked the rug right out from under my feet. It was awesome. Also, belated spumbler alert. 216 comes from Stevio Murfinio, who writes, one, if you could punch any celebrity slash politician slash dickhead in the world right square in the face with no consequences, who would it be? Two, if you could travel back in time to live in any place in the world at any point in history, where would you go? I don't think I can answer your first question without the NSA getting me. More honesty, I'd probably try to find a way to somehow construe Mrs. Walker or my high school physics teacher. Wait a minute. You didn't just say celebrity or politician, you said dickhead! Oh, well, fuck, that's settled. Mrs. Walker, prepare to get pwned. Unless you're dead. No skull punching you. <laughs> As for your second question, I do shy away from time travel questions. I know, no fun. But I think of the historical significance of everything happening as it should, both bad and good, for history serves as a valuable teaching tool, and my presence would inevitably change the course of events. I'm sure some would argue that, knowing what I know now, perhaps it wouldn't be so bad for me to go back in time to my favorite historical period, but I mean, I have a hard enough time speaking 2013 German, let alone early 20th century German. The United States government wouldn't be compelled until late 1941, at which point the American people fucking flipped into rage mode against the Japanese, and I don't think I can compel Neville Chamberlain at any better, any better than other intelligent minds of the period, so eh. Let's use the mechanism allowing me to travel back in time to get to a point where I can somehow prevent the thing allowing me to travel back in time or be informed and test out the whole paradox theory. The end. Entry 217 comes from Zenus the Shadow. Zenus? Zen. Uh, who writes, uh, What is your opinion of the YouTube Google Plus thing? What do you think of the Steam box? Oh boy. I've given the Google overlords three and a half weeks to apply their latest major change to the website, as well as to tweak elements of that change. I also wanted to give myself some time to do what I've been taught to do and take a historian's approach. Too often is the reaction to change fueled by emotion, both positive and negative. We must abstract the analysis of our lives so our reactions aren't so inappropriately visceral. Let's begin by stating the obvious. This was a business decision. Google wants to tap into the Facebook market. Google Plus has been a desolate wasteland of activity. 
Consequently, Google needs to find a great way to foster activity in their failed social service. I do believe I mentioned this earlier. At the same time, they have received many complaints over the years about the poor quality of YouTube comments, small character limits, the inability to hyperlink, the incapacity to hold a group conversation, and of course the valueless comments which have chased many away from the service. So why not angle to make both services better with one major change? Tie the entire, entire comment system to Google+. Prevent people from leaving comments without a Google Plus account. Disable the inbox and have notifications go through Google Plus or email since they didn't remove that function. Set up a default system through which top comments rise to the well, top. You know, comments of value, comments worth your time. There are going to be bugs and kinks in every system, particularly one as vast as YouTube, but Google is powerful and they would not have become so successful without being intelligent, right? Naturally, I have problems with the new system. I made 11 of my own recommendations using the feedback uh, opportunity within a few days of the comment shift. What changes do I find to be negative? Big picture first. Yep, let me go ahead and pull it out here. <laughs> There's a joke in there somewhere. Does that work? No. Let me go ahead and... Uh, Capture window, that will be sufficient, entire window. Here you go. So, uh, this would be a thing. Okay, so my friend Emma puts this video of her venting her frustration with much profanity about Google Plus on YouTube. Gets an overwhelmingly positive response, 30,000 likes after like three hours of being online, less than 1,000 dislikes. And yet, let's take a look at the top comments YouTube decided would be more relevant and important to me. Well, teenagers, they lives for complain. I hope Google goes on with complete massive and total integration of all their services. Since things are starting to become serious here, maybe you should play with other stuff. Uh, Latif Alabi Oki, these entitled privileged little brats don't like any service, don't use it. For example, blah, 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 you get A for creativity. Amused non-programmer doesn't like free software. Entitlement generation, if you don't like it, learn to code and make your own, then offer it for free. Her thoughts on Google Plus just make me lull, clever little attention seeker. Uh, bad hair day, well I wonder what she really thinks. Uh... Uh huh. Repetitive chorus line seems to be the, the bane of this generation. You have lyrical uh, poets from Pace generation. And then, nigger 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 nigger. First thing I've identified, I have a uh, couple of problems, you know sophisticated spam filter program, but it isn't triggered by someone just typing the word nigger 85 times. There's, uh, the rest of that you can pause and perhaps read on the screen. Just something I thought I'd bring up. So, uh, yeah. Um, YouTube's default top comment system, uh, First, it doesn't work, it's advertised. That's not something that I wrote there, or I have no connection or correlation to those people at all. It's just, you know, a sign that I thought might be useful to get some more information. And uh, that image from a Tumblr post is just one example among many. I like the newest first option, and I'd like the ability to default to that, but if you're gonna keep showing me top comments first, could you actually design an algorithm or some kind of mechanic by which these comments would actually be top? Because I don't think nigger ad nauseum qualifies as tops for me. Uh, next up. Next up, next up, next up, next up. Got another thing. Got another thing. Got another thing. Let me show you. Oh, for fu- Are you fucking kidding me? What the fuck, OBS? It's the same fucking window. Are, 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 are we not fucking allowed to have nice things? Are, are we just fucking jacking off here or what? Really? Really? No, that's not the right fucking window at all. Let's try again, but now with more feeling. Oh, no, 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 no. That'd be fucking intelligent. Actually fucking doing what I wanted you, you know, the fucking reason why I use you instead of bandy cam in the fucking first place. Was that so we could have fucking nice things, but apparently we're not allowed to have Oh, there we fucking go. Okay, thank God. This. This is my YouTube inbox. This is the first time I've looked at my inbox page in nearly three weeks. Why? Well, I used to have a link up here at the top right corner that would actually take me to my fucking inbox. 
Now, I have to use my address bar. Or I need to bookmark the page. That's right. All these things. The last time I got a com, it was apparently the 11th of November after the change that I've been rolled over. We got someone who decided to share a video with me, which would be someone I'd block anyway. And then seven personal messages. Many of which I don't care about. It look confusing as fuck. This guilty casuals person, though, that definitely seems like something I'd want to help with. Ah, yeah, that's something that I tell people to message me about. Really, I was invited to TGN? My God, I wish I fucking knew! Yeah, no longer have a convenient link to it. Why? Because Google removed it. Because most common notifications will now be delivered by Google Plus and not to my inbox. But what about personal messages? Uh, what about people who try to share videos with me? Good job, Google overlords. You have actually diminished my ability to interact with people. Yeah, I can bookmark the page and I can also hyperlink it. But I can also completely ignore it. So, since comments are theoretically no longer delivered conveniently to my inbox where I can archive and expand them in a large area, where do I get them? Here. I mean, you can't see my mouse pointer, but you can see the bell lighting up at the top right corner. There it fucking is. Here we go. This is it. This is where I get them. This little fucking pop-up right here. Alright. Okay, let's go through the process of showing you how my life is like. So, biodissonance here, uh, left a comment here. I can obviously read more, fair enough, keywords being both trained and professional, corporate. I figure I'll go ahead and read these comments here. Yep, and I can, I can click view post, it'll take me to some sort of crazy Google ass page in order for me to view all comments I would need to click on this video and then go to click on all comments uh, I can of course reply to this straight up I can plus one it I can uh, mute him or flag his message as spam I can look at the video in this pop-up player holy fucking shit that's just what I always wanted my goddamn the switch to Google Plus make it hard to gather the questions? Um, no. Trans... Translate? Excited me. Oh man, that was great. So, shared my video. Because Biodissonance is just going around random fucking videos I've uploaded and leaving comments. Alright. Right. And then. Uh huh. Mentioned you to comment with using something magic. Okay. Your video, Trusair's greatest power, making people indivisible. Yep. What I learned from this adventure is that Griffith is afraid of des desserts, or he really likes water. Desserts. Okay. Good call. And someone added me to a circle. Well, you got to have that experience, everyone. And if I click on the bell again, I apparently this comment. Darth Pathfinder is on a fucking mission to leave stupid comments. Oh, not they're not all stupid, but uh of comments on like every single fucking video I've ever uploaded and some of them have like that massive fucking trail off no and you know situation like this like uh we're going to go into an off topic tangent mode situation here this is a uh, when you leave a comment on every single video starting with the absolute beginning at least one comment, sometimes multiple comments, three, four, five, six replies of other people that a person has ever uploaded. 
I try so hard to read comments. I really do. I've read at least, despite all this shit, 96-97% of all comments. Darth Pathfinder, though, I fucking whoop, goes right over my head most of the shit he writes. You, you imagine he's finally gotten on to these, what, Mega Man 8-bit deathmatch along with the Emperor Battle for Dune stuff happened in early 2012, I think? You know, he's left. He's viewed over the past several months, like, 12, 13, 14, 1500 videos. <laughs> Goes right over that. And, you know, sometimes people ask me questions, too, that I could answer. It's like, would you ever do LGWI? Whatever, fuck you. You had time for a Q&A video. Maybe you should have put all of your questions in there, huh? <laughs> and uh, that one, I'd never actually even seen before. Even though it showed that I read that. Never actually read it. Uh, that would be a one problem with the notification system. The fact that uh, it doesn't think I've actually read some of those. So we got to have that moment together, one. Everyone, we even went off on a tangent. That little piece of shit bell right there, I click it, it gives me a small pop-up through which I can try to sift through my comments. Along the way, and despite every met edit I've made to the contrary, I get notifications of people who add me to their circles, people who plus one my posts, and of people who share my videos with others. You know what? I don't give a fuck what you do. If it's not a comment on one of my videos or a personal message sent to me, can I tell the Google Not Plus notification system that? Lol, no. This bell understands what it's like to give a fuck, or to not give a fuck, and it feels that way about me. Because when I want to see every single new comment posted on a video in convenient fashion, it says, <laughs> When I want to actually have truthful and complete notifications of every comment that's been left on a video, or a particular video since the last time I checked, it goes, <laughs> When I want it to not uh, tell me things that don't matter to me, it goes... <laughs> now, there is an email system, and I've seen that in action, despite telling Google Plus notifications not to send me any messages through email, so I might one day end up ignoring that little fucking bell. But man, I remember back in the day when things were more convenient. I like not wasting my time. And then maybe I could have actually read a message from Darth Pathfinder, who's made it his fucking life mission to give me a fucking comment on every single video, and, you know, then I could go from there, right? So let's read these. This one guy for the 13th, whatever. I stopped collecting all these partnership offers. I stopped caring. I had too many. Rabble, rabble. Yep. Are you Dan? Uh, see, that one was fucking. That one was so long ago. One, that was a week and a half ago. This person, I, I haven't fucking replied to or responded to at all. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to remember that. Uh, uh I'll make a separate note to myself for try to. Or try to remember it. This is Boy Joy, who is one two three time one two three, uh, who fucking has just continued to send me so much shit, There's so much shit. Like everything I ever didn't want to know about King of Dragon Pass was spammed to me, and I'm a fucking administrator of the Voltron Army, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you spamming me? I fucking approved your account. <laughs> Holy shit! I'm invited to TGN. Uh, yeah, I'd love to work with you to help grow your audience and monetize your content. I bet you fucking would! What is this? That's fucking spam! Good news, everyone! Oh yeah, that Tap Cat Vitz guy. I forgot about you. I looked at a thing or two of his, and I fucking goddammit. Too much shit. Piles and piles of shit. Alright. Oh, hey, if I want you to go back to window capture, you fucking forget. What the fuck? You never had this shitty problem before. 
Do I have to fucking... No, that doesn't work. You know what? Fuck a you, fine. Fuck a you. Fuck a you. No longer give a fuck. Not a single fuck is given in my life. LOOK AT ALL THE FUCKS I GIVE! <laughs> oh, minimal lighting in my room. Alright, let's fucking continue. God damn it. So yeah. I, I, what else? My video manager no longer stays up to date with comments, much less views. I'm, I'm not gonna, I gotta just stop showing you shit. Many viewers who participate in this hobby have rightfully voted with their time and have chosen not to bind their YouTube account to a Google Plus account, meaning they can no longer comment on videos. And hell, no one can reply to the comments made before the switch this month. Glad I wasn't trying to hold a discussion or answer questions or concerns for people as a content creator. Oh, wait. Google says that it has offered the content creator more options for moderating its content. Really? How about giving me an option to make clickable timestamps function 100% of the time without opening a new tab or just taking me to the beginning of the video? How about giving me an option to disallow hyperlinks and comments made on my videos? I think links should be reserved for the content uploader. And while I don't mind the lack of a character limit, I know people who do. So how about allowing content uploaders the ability to change the maximum character limit for their channel? How about giving me the power to override anyone who's disallowed replies to their comments on my videos? That option certainly doesn't encourage discussion or interaction, particularly if they've asked a question and don't realize or forgot that people can't reply to their comments. That's definitely happened. At least a dozen people since the crazy change nearly a month ago have left comments asking questions I can't reply to. Boogie was one of the people I corrected. I think that's the only person I fucking bothered to correct. How about giving content uploaders the ability to disallow the editing of comments left on their videos? I want to hold people accountable for the dumb shit they write, and you're going to need more than a this message was edited link. How about allowing me to set a default of top comments first or newest first so I can choose my preference? How about giving me a link I can use to get to my inbox if I'm still going to get messages there? <laughs> there are a few positive changes to the system. For starters, I do like the unlimited character length. A few of you know that I will type involved comments, including timestamps and descriptions, particularly of the uploaders asking for help or advice like uh, Malkasphia has with Might and Magic Book 1. Being a content uploader, I recognize that my participation as a viewer is important, and I do just that. And although I dislike that little fucking piss ant bell up there in the top right now, smaller fucking pop-up is on my screen, and how much extraneous shit it tells me I fucking like the inbox where I can fucking see things all lots of fucking things at once, and then fucking would lie to me, like the little bell lies to me. I do like being able to read and reply to comments through the bell. I just wish I could read them all from there. Uh, the little bits of script you can use to add emphasis to words and posts as well as link to other channels through the... Uh, I guess that's alright. Overall, I do see the changes as being a negative, but I'm not grotesquely offended or filled with such hate as to throw a bitch fit and quit YouTube. This service still satisfies the intent of my hobby. I'll just have to make do with less interactivity. As an aside, for anyone who actually thinks this change removes anonymity, or for anyone who thinks I can't block people and make their movie scripts and dick pics and constitutional limits vanish just as easily as I block people for saying first, what are you taking to enhance your ignorance, and where can I get it? Speaking of ignorance, I had to search engine Steambox. Never heard of it. Until then. Doesn't affect me at all, so I'm apathetic towards it. Next. 218 from Metal Slime Month. Oof. How do you feel about transhumanism? One and two, are you a lucid dreamer? The desires and impulses of transhumanism predate Julian Huxley. Science and technology have for thousands of years fundamentally altered human beings, usually for better, but occasionally for worse. I would remind any transhumanist that much of human history is full of philosophers and scientists who go, HOLY SHIT, THIS IS AMAZING, IT'LL REVOLUTIONIZE EVERYTHING! And those individuals have always had their detractors. Sometimes those detractors are right. Sometimes, they impose their will. A small statement of my opinion on the subject, but I think it suffices. As for whether I'm a lucid dreamer, I'm, uh, I'm actually not sure. I lean towards no. 
As a kid in elementary school, I've heard on numerous occasions that nightmares are not to be feared, for they are your own mind, and you are in control of your own mind, and you need to go to sleep reinforcing that thought, so if you encounter a scary situation, you'll remember that you're in control. That helped to enforce dream awareness in my mind. Since then, I know there have been moments in both dreams and nightmares where I've taken the time to declare the fact that those are dreams and nightmares. For example, while having a nightmare, I'll try to force myself out of sleep paralysis and awaken. This, however, has met with mixed results. I remember one instance of being a kid and being chased by these horrible killer bees outside my house only to realize that I was dreaming, wish for a can of bee-killing spray and save my life. In another instance, my parents and brother were killed and devoured in front of me by monsters, and I was running around my house and I was cornered and I shouted into my head, THIS IS NOT REAL! YOU'RE NOT REAL! WAKE UP! Only for my vision to go black and a pale white Jolly Rogers appear in my vision instead. There was a lot of screaming involved, which involved me wrenching myself out of my own head with the help of my parents who had been awakened due to said screaming. I say I'm not sure because, well, I don't know. Whether my inability to call it the fact that I'm dreaming all the time and all my dreams is because I'm tricking myself or because I actually want to observe everything that happens. You know, because I'm a creative daydreaming type, so why not have some fun? Many of my dreams and their elements have stuck with me over the years and I've continued dreams on occasion between nights, but I'll also transition from one crazy thing to the other, and the notes I've taken on some of my own dreams seem unearthly. Since we're on a similar subject, I do know that I've experienced false awakening on numerous occasions. Those usually happen when I have something I need to do that day, so I apparently trick myself into easing my worry by preparing to go do that thing while I actually remain asleep. There have also been a handful of moments in my entire life, no more than a dozen, in which I've consciously felt what's called sleep at paralysis. They have almost always happened after I brute forced my way out of a nightmare, and while they've never lasted more than a few seconds each for me, let me assure you that they all amount to zero fucking amusement. 219, Lead Yasman, who writes, Finally, the stupid fucking Google Plus shit stop stopping me from commenting. One, in this year's Rewarding the Rewarders program, are there any games in particular you're really looking forward to playing? Two, if you could introduce a game you like to any historical figure, who would it be, what game, and why? Expedition Conquistador is the one game I'd say I'd hike to play. It's a weird feeling, and I'm morbidly enjoying myself by stringing along the anticipation of playing it even more. As for your second question, well, before I inevitably died for my impudence, I'd like to show Adolf Hitler any game which illustrates A. The dangers of fighting a multi-front war and or B. The dangers of fighting in a Russian winter. Maybe it could even be a Napoleon-themed game, you know, Hitler's military idol. The man who lost to such a vast, capable fighting force because of the fucking Russian winter and... Fighting a war versus so many fucking people. Good guy, Hitler. Give the Soviet Union a hand like that. 220 from Jouzu? 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 <laughs> 87. Who writes, Do you play chess? On occasion, my father taught me how to play 20 years ago, and I enjoy the deep strategy behind it. All right, folks, we're coming into the home stretch here. Uh, we've got 221 through 240 left to go. I'll provide some final thoughts about the situations. I, uh, we're fucking done. I, as you can tell, I'm getting more excited, despite the fact that I've had nothing to eat or drink today. But people think I'm, like, high or I'm, like, a sugar. No, this is just grooving. I have this power to summon energy from within. <laughs> I'll see you all in a few seconds.